Hey guys, just Janny. Today I'm going to show you how I made my fish necklace. You'll need the tines from three forks, and you'll need one spoon. Top of the spoon is the head, the tip of the spoon is the tail. And you'll need some wire. I use 20 gauge to thread these bones on because the pre-made ones aren't long enough. You'll also need something about an inch and a half across. This is what I use to draw the line for those two shapes there. So just anything you have. So the first thing we need to do is flatten our spoon and cut it. So after you flatten it, I'm cutting mine an inch and a half from the bottom of the pattern. It'll be an inch and a half. So you can go ahead and flatten cut and grind that smooth. Okay, so we have flattened, cut, ground it off. Um, next, we're gonna mark for the fin. What I did was I marked this about a half inch. And I had to put on my glasses so I could see this. Um, just put a mark about half inch. If I can get it to write. And then I just use this, kind of try to get it in the center of the spoon. And trace around it. Okay, so that'll be our tail, and then for the head, I went up about three quarters of an inch from that line. A little mark, and use whatever it is you have. And trace another line. Okay, now when I made mine, I just cut straight through here with my mini bandsaw and then I used my, uh, just my little jeweler saw to cut this edge out. So whatever you, it is you're going to use, let's just go ahead and cut on those two solid lines. Just want to show you real quick. When I went to cut out the tail, this line comes all the way to the corner, and this one doesn't. So it's not going to be even. So what I'm gonna do is take my little spool here, and uh, you know, just in case this happened to you to line that one back up at the bottom, and that one, and just remark that spot. and follow that new line when you cut it out. Okay, I have both of mine cut out and you can see there's a little bit extra on this one. I'm going to use my Dremel. I have just a, a sanding, I don't even know what you call it, drum, a sanding drum on it. So I'll just hit that real quick. On this one, my little pointy corner came off because I was sawing it around and it broke. So that means I'll have to take some of this corner off. But I can do that while I'm sanding and grinding. So if that happened to you, uh, it's fine. Uh, just make sure they match up when you're done. So let's get those ground and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, next step. We need our fork tines. If you have some that you saved up and you want to use, go ahead and grab those out. We're going to need 12 fork tines. If you have to cut them off your fork, go ahead and do that. We're not going to grind these yet, so first thing we're going to do is just cut them off. And we're not going to flatten this. And the reason is they have the this curve in them already, and that works good. The, 
they curve down like real fish bones. I think I got my bottom two upside down because they, they kind of look like they're going up. But they're supposed to kind of point down. So I'm not going to flatten mine. I'm just going to cut them off. And then I will give you what lengths to cut them because they go larger to smaller all the way down. Okay, we have all of our fork tines. Next, I've written down here, one is the row. So the first row is one and a quarter inches, second row, one and eight, eighth, and so on. So they drop down by eighth inch increments. So go ahead and I like to put uh, the point of the tine on the line. So my first one's one and a quarter. And someday I will have a Sharpie that writes the first time. So you're gonna need two of each. So measure two of them at one and a quarter and keep your sets separate. That way you don't have to figure out later which pair goes together. So if you just set them aside separately, it'll be a lot easier. So go ahead, you can pause it where you can see these. So our next measurement is going to be one and an eighth. And when you get to the end, then I take my bolt cutter and I'm gonna cut just above the line. That way I have a little room to grind those off. So we're on row two. Your neck sets one and an eighth inch. And after you've finished marking them all, cut them off with your bolt cutters or whatever you're gonna use, grind them smooth and meet me back here. Okay, next step are the little vertebrae in between our fork tines. Each one of these is a quarter of an inch and you will need seven of them. So I used all these bits we cut off of our fork tines, I'm going to use for this part. So I just marked the one side because there's still, it's still rough from being cut with the bolt cutters. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that side so I remember to grind that down. And then from there, it's going to be a quarter of an inch. On a little one like that, I'll just go ahead and grind it. You know, if I'm using a bigger piece, I'll cut it with a bolt cutter first and then grind it. So, you know, these are kind of hard to mark, but go ahead and mark those cut them. Um, I used a pair of pliers to hold on to mine to grind them and go ahead and get seven of those done and I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay we have all of our little vertebrae cut and ground smooth. Next we need to drill holes. So I did mark these two. If you're good at eyeballing it don't worry about it to get the center on this one. I did put a ruler on the pattern portion there and kind of got everything lined up and I did mark those. All of these pieces and all of the times, I'm just going to use my center punch and mark and hope for the best. Um, if you don't know what center punch is, you can get these at Harbor Freight for just a few dollars and they put a divot in your metal 
and it keeps the drill bit from bouncing around so much. So I just kind of eyeball the center of these, hit it with the center punch. Also all of the fork tines. I do recommend doing one pair of tines at a time so that they're already in order and you don't have to sort them out. So go ahead and drill holes in all of your vertebrae and all of your tines. And I used a 1 16th inch bit for mine. Okay, next step, if you have the bender press, I'm using the smallest channel and the smallest pin and we're going to bend this around and that's going to be the loop to put our chain through. So I'm doing pattern side down and bending the back over until it touches. When I look at mine, you can see this isn't exactly centered. So if that happens to you, use your press like a vise and grab a rawhide mallet or I have one of these little guys and just tap it over till it's straight. And then go ahead and make sure it's touching. So it looks lined up straight. It's pretty flush. Okay, we've got all of our pieces here. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I will show how I bent the wire since I don't have a pre-made wire, I used this 20 gauge and made my own. I will show you how to get the end. If you're not familiar with this, this is what it's going to look like. I'm not sure if that's in focus, but we're gonna make a loop with a couple of twists there. We're gonna do one end at a time, but both ends will end up looking the same. And that's what we're gonna put our jump rings on. So, I forget what these are called. They're by Webbers. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. So, I'm going to go down here. I'm just picking a spot. There's, it's, I'm guesstimating how much wire it will take to go around and wrap a couple times. So, I'm just making a 90. Whoops, make sure I'm in front of the camera. And then I'm gonna turn it and put it where I want. And this is where you choose how big around your loop will be. So real quick, I will see. So this loop was about the middle. That's, and that's about the right size. So I'm just gonna get in there. Put that little 90 I made in the middle and push it down and around, okay? Hopefully this is focusing okay. It's, and I'm not left-handed, I'm gonna switch hands. I'm gonna grab another little plain pair of pliers and wrap that around a couple times. If you have a bunch of excess, you can just Clip it off. Okay, let me check. Okay, am I in front of the camera? There we go. So there's one end. When you have one end made, then you can start stacking up your pieces here. So I did put one of these vertebrae at the bottom. That's what I started with. Normally, I would polish all this, run it in my tumbler before, 
I put it together, but for the sake of the video, I am just going to build it. So we're going to put both tines and then another vertebrae to separate. Now, if these bigger ones, if you can see the curve, like here, the curve is coming out and down. We want to put them on that way. You see on these bottom two, they look like they're kind of curved up. So I probably got those two upside down. Okay. So now we're going to do the same loop on the top so these all stay together. Don't worry about them being all on one side right now. So we're going to do the same thing. I have it flush with my pieces. It's not super tight. You can see they move, but I am right up against them. I'm going to bend it over, make that 90. Oops, in front of the camera here. And then I'm just going to turn my pliers so they're on the top, like that, oops, and wrap it around. Actually, did I give myself, yep, okay, I was just double checking, there is enough room to wrap the wire around there, because you don't want to uh, make it so tight you, you have nowhere to wrap your wire. Okay, so I want to, I'm lifting it up to pull it up close so I have that little space to wrap my wire. So I'm just pulling it tight there. And don't worry about this end getting all bent up. We're going to cut that off. So I've got, looks like going on three wraps there. Two is really plenty. I'm going to nip that off and then use your pliers to kind of pinch down that little sharp tail there. You can take it off your other plier now. Do oh, you see it's kind of bent over the side? We can stand that back up. Get it back straight. Sometimes that happens when we're pulling hard to bend it, end up tipping it over. So I was going to grab my little pliers here to tuck that end in. Okay. Now the jump rings are going on either end, so I want my loops up and down ways and then go ahead and put your jump rings on use the heavier jump rings that you have because this is a pretty heavy piece there's a lot of weight on them so i have the ones that are uh, they're some kind of metal they're not so soft Oops. And I did not check what size these were. They're probably a six millimeter. It really doesn't matter the size if it's if it works for you and you like it. Oops, I lost my jump ring too, there it is. Okay, we're gonna call that good for the sake of the video. Get my tail right side up. Get my tines in the right spot. I can see now, look, this one's upside down because it, it's going up, 
instead of down. So uh, don't be in a hurry like I was. <laughs> Take your time, get your tines right side up and it really does make a super cute fish necklace. That was a big project. Thanks for doing it with me. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more tutorials like this one.